Okay, everybody in the monkey's uncle posted a comment on my 90 minute spell story speed build video to take the build into overdrive. And here we go overdrive, 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 overdrive. Everybody wants overdrive. Okay, let's just give everybody who posted a comment on that video as of June 8th, 1230 Eastern. Honorable mention. There we go. Scroll all the way down. All the way down the line, everybody posted the comment. There you go. There's your three seconds of fame. Oh, yeah. By the way, David Venters won the Something Stupid contest. He was the first person to post something stupid. Hardcore slacker. No, veteran hardcore slacker David Venters. Congratulations. You were the first first person to post something stupid. And somebody else posted something notable here. Work does. The time is right. Your perfume fills my head. The stars get red and know the night's so blue. And then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, Who loved you? Major Slack does. Oh no, he's singing again. All right, all right, enough of that. Major Slack videos. There you go. Quick, quick reminder to always post comments on my videos. You never know when you might see your name up in lights. Okay, let's get down to business. I assume that everybody's seen my 90 minute spell star speed build video. I'll put a link to that in the video description and in a pinned comment. Um, we are going to take that build into overdrive by getting Loretta's Great Bow. What's Loretta's Great Bow? This is Loretta's Great Bow you're seeing me use right now. Um, it's immensely powerful and the best thing about it is it has a fantastic range. The only thing, the only drawback is it has a bit of a, a slow cast time, but other than that, it's immensely useful and can do some downright embarrassing things to the game. Seriously, seriously embarrassing. And this is the unbuffed version, okay? We could buff it up with like Golden Vow, Terra Magica, Magic Shroud and Crack Tear, all sorts of talismans like the Grave School talisman. Um, yeah, uh, well, looks like we're gonna have to take this build into Mega Overdrive. <laughs> that is, I'm assuming you wanna see Mega Overdrive. I don't know, you wanna see Mega Overdrive? Post the comment. Um, yeah. You know these Caden Seltzers, these mounted Caden Seltzers that are, are totally hellacious? Not anymore. How about those giant crabs? Th th I've, this is something I've never done before. Just like completely knocked that guy out off his horse and just leave his horse like, you know? These things here, I freaking hate these things. One shot. Like I said, this is unbuffed. Unbuffed Loretta's Grapo. And here I'm out at this location. It's right near Rotview Balcony in Kalid. Northwest Kalid. And I'm fooling around with the wiping up these birds. Let me just fast track this here because I wanted to show you something else before we get into the getting of Loretta's Grapo. So I wiped all the all these birds here. Two of these birds. We're at 1,700 runes each, and they couldn't touch me from up here. All with Loretta's Grapo. Okay, now on the left side of the screen, you see a hole in the ground that leads down to a cellar. At this location, and in the cellar is. This sword called Saint Trina's sword. I never knew about this. It's a sleep sword, and it scales with intelligence. So we, you know, we could probably add this to the sword of Saint Trina. See, it scales with intelligence. So we, this is a great addition to the build too. Gonna have to work on that. Anyways, here's something I did with this. I couldn't believe this. I just kept perpetually putting this troll to sleep with this St. Trina sword. I know I'm going way off on a tangent here. I'm supposed to be getting Loretta's Great Bow. I know, but I just I couldn't resist showing this to you guys. I just completely manhandled this troll with the default St. Trina's sword of St. Trina. Like, it's not even upgraded yet. And it's upgraded with somber smithing stones. So, and every time, see, look, put him to sleep, do a critical hit. Every time you do a critical hit, you put him to sleep again. Is that nuts or what? I had no idea this thing existed. <laughs> See, he's got to sleep again. <laughs> Is that awesome or what? Okay, hurry up, Slack. Everybody wants to see Loretta's great bow. Come on, hurry up and kill him. 
So you finally got a single sword slammed off, but it's gonna go to sleep again. Down you go, big boy. You go whack him. That's it. Okay, sorry about that. Loretta's great build. This is what it looks like. This is what the item card looks like. I'm gonna show you in a second. Here we go. Used by Royal Knight Loretta. It's a boss fight that we have to do. Okay, so here we're picking up exactly where we left off at the end of the Spell Sword Speed Build video here in Murkwater Cave. Now, Royal Knight Loretta is way up in the northwest of Lyurnia. It's a pretty tough boss fight, but we can easily kill her with about half a dozen rock slings if we could stay alive long enough to do it. Let's start out by going to Celia Crystal Tunnel. Okay, Celia Crystal Tunnel. I said previously that um, this was a poor place to farm cracked crystal, but I've discovered a way to just easily run in and grab a few cracked crystal and run out. So this is actually a, a pretty good early farm for cracked crystal. We're going to need cracked crystal to take down Royal Knight Loretta. Really? Yes, really. So if you just sneak in like this, stick to the right side, and you can just quickly run over and grab some cracked crystal here. And grab this one quickly before the guy starts throwing pest threads at you. And over here, you can kill these guys with Night Comet. A charged Night Comet will instantly kill them, and then you can grab their cracked crystal. Okay, and that's it, and then sneak out, sticking to the left side. Now I'm going to do this a couple more times, a couple, three more times. I'm going to fast drag that. So I've got nine. Each batch of crystal darts, which is what we're going to make with these requires three cracked crystal. So I'll do this a couple more times. That should do it. Next. Royal Knight Loretta, like I said, is way up in the northwest of Lyurnia. Want everybody to start off at Stormhill Shack. We can easily get to her location, even though it's deep in the Carrion Manor, and it's like basically deep in high-level enemy territory. We can easily get there. From Stormhill Shack, just ride north. Ride right past these guys. We're going to take the secret path to Lyurnia. It runs right along the east side of, of Stormhill Castle, which is off to our left there. So basically you're going through this big archway here, and you're going to find a road on the other side of this rather dark tunnel and just take the road all the way to the end. Okay, I'm going to show you on the map. We're eventually going to run out of map. So we're going up that way to the northwest. There's Anya. You can stop and talk to her if you so desire. We're not going to bother with that. At the end here is a cookbook that will allow you to make soft cotton. You probably want to grab this because this is a really remote location and you're not going to be back here pretty much ever. Like, you know, this is a one-time deal, so you should grab that. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back and get it if you want it. All right? And then you're just going to take this skinny ravine all the way up north to Lyurnia. This is a pretty linear path. The only thing I have to worry about is not falling off over the edge on the right side. But other than that, just follow this ravine all the way up here. Okay, so I'm just going to fast track this because it's pretty routine. And at this point, you're breaking into Lyurnia. And you're going to find the lake facing cliff side of grace right here. This is basically off the map. I'm going to show you in a second. See, it's just off the map. 
of Limgrave, but we're going to get all the maps for Lyurnia shortly. For now, I just want you to ride down this path here. I'm going to take a little detour here. This is important for this build uh, for other reasons. Go into this graveyard and grab the Academy Scroll. Okay, just grab that. Cut to the left, jump off the cliff. Don't worry, it's a safe drop down. You won't even take any damage. And just go jamming down the hill here and through this enemy camp. There is a Cuckoo Glintstone cookbook off to the right, right there. You see the little sparkly thing there? That thing right there. You could grab that, but it's kind of redundant for a sorcerer, so you can safely leave that alone. But if you want to get that, you can grab that. And down here is um, the Lyurnia Lakeshore side of Grace, I believe. And there's a merchant here. This merchant has a very important cookbook. This right here, the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 11. This will allow you to make crystal darts. And that's what you need the cracked crystal for. Alright? So with your cracked crystal, make, say, I don't know... 30 or 40 crystal darts. That's where we are now. Find the little Mac map beacon on the the map pillar on your like undeveloped map where I put a beacon right there. Okay. By the way, this is Gamer Slack down there in the trenches. And MC Dub Slack here in the rear of the gear on the microphone, so I'm trying to keep up with Gamer Slack. He's not stopping for anybody. At this the location where you get the map, there's these guys right here. You can instantly kill them with a night comment. You don't even have to charge it, just shoot a Night Comet, instant, instant death. And here is the first map. East Lyurnia map. Okay, so this part is mapped out. Find these three rocky, sorry, five rocky islands here. You put a beacon right here at that location there, and we're going to go there. Basically what we're doing now is we're going to map out all of Lyurnia. And this is going to take all of seven minutes. That's all it's going to take. Seven minutes to map out Lyurnia. All right? We're not going to collect any smithing stones, nothing like that. Just map out Lyurnia. That's completely optional. That'll allow you to make uh, freezing grease, if I recall correctly, that cookbook there. And you probably want to rest here at Laskiar Ruins, just to get everybody off your ass, just in case anybody's following you. And put a beacon right here. That will put a beacon on the pagoda up ahead. You can see it up ahead. Now don't go charging straight there because there's this really badass revenant right in front of it. What you want to do is hook around to the back of it. And then you can kind of like sneak up behind it and get into the pagoda. And there's a way gate, like a sending gate, I believe they're officially called, in the pagoda. And you can take this to teleport you way up north. You go around the back, quickly grab the smithing stone 3 because you're not going to be back here again. And then go up the stairs as quick as you can and take this sending gate. See, there's the revenant. If you want to take him on, well, we'll just notify your next of kin. Everybody else, take the way gate. <laughs> and we're going to use another way gate to save a lot of time. Okay, so now I'm hoping Gamer Slack is going to show you on the map where, you, where we are. Although it's not really mapped out, so it won't make that, that much difference. You're just going to be looking at a lot of blank brown space. Yeah, see? So. That's where we are, but, you know, like I said, it's not mapped out, so there's not much to look at. Probably want to rest till daytime, and then we're going to go to the south and cut to the left as soon as you can, just right behind this building here, right past here, cut to the left, through here, and then you're going to take a right, and you're going to keep the railing on your left and go down until you can see a rooftop on your left that you can jump onto, right here, jump onto that. Cut over to the east, double jump over here, and one more jump down here, and down to the ground. And head to the southeast, up the corner of this building, hop over, and you're going to see a golden golden seed tree. Grab that golden seed, and head down to the broken road. And this is pretty routine. There's another map pillar there, put a beacon right there, and just go straight there. Okay.
Now, like I said, with our, um, we are now at, at Intelligence 38. Here's another map, by the way. Grab that map, discover the Site of Grace. This is the second map. This is the, uh, I forget what map it is. There's three Lyurnia maps. East Lyurnia. North Lyurnia? Show the map, Slack. North Lyurnia, for some reason, even though it's like basically central Lyurnia. Okay, from this point, you're going to put a beacon way out in the middle of the water here on this circle with a little dot on it, which is another pagoda. And that pagoda has another sending gate, which will teleport us up to northwest Lyurnia. And at that point, Lyurnia will be completely mapped out. Like I said, it goes really fast. It takes like five, six or seven minutes. It's like really fast. By the way, don't be wandering around too much in these waters because there's all kinds of giant crayfish slash giant lobsters that will just myrtleize you. Just destroy you in the New York minute, so yeah. Okay, so once you get here, take that sending gate and this will teleport us up to Northwest Lyurnia. And that's it. There's another map fragment there. Pick that up and Lyurnia will be completely mapped out. There we go. Okay, completely mapped out. You can hit up a site of grace just to the southwest here. It's a matter of convenience. And then we're going to continue on into Carrier Manor. So basically we're doing this in three parts. This whole Loretta's Great Bow operation. First of all, we're going to get to the location where the Royal Knight Loretta boss fight is. Then we're going to put together a strike team to take her down. Because like, like I said, we're a little underpowered to do this. And then we're going to do the boss fight and get Loretta's Great Bow. So for now, I'll just go jamming north through King's Realm Runes. And there's kind of like a wall at the end, which is not really a wall, it's just kind of like a, an invisible wall. So just hit it with your sword, you may take a little heat, but don't worry, there's a side of grace just beyond here, you can rest there. Powder your nose, get healed up. Definitely want to rest to get all the enemies off your butt. And then we're going to continue north, up to Caria Manor, which is this area right here. Put a beacon right there. This whole area here is Caria Manor. That's where Loretta, Royal Knight Loretta lives. Now you want to hang out on the <laughs> the cliffs on the right side. Follow the, the edge of the cliffs on the right side to avoid all that magic rain crap, which is pretty deadly. But it never rains down on the edge of the cliff. We're only going to have to deal with it when we get close to the Carrier Manor. And there is the Carrier Manor. Okay, so pretty much take yourself pretty close to the castle wall and then cut to the left and there's a set of grace right on the stairs here. And here you're safe from the magic rain. And carry a manor, the opening area is what I like to call the land of the hand. You probably want to set your flasks to four and three even though I don't think you're going to take any damage if you follow my instructions here. Basically, we're going to go up and to the left. Actually, all you have to do is follow the road. I'm going to put a beacon where you need to go, but you don't really need to, like, don't worry about the beacon. Just follow the road. And whatever you do, don't pick up anything, okay? If you, pick, if you stop to pick up loot, it's going to slow you down, and the hands are going to grab you, okay? Don't loot anything. You can always come back here later, and fool around. See, there's a hand right at the top of the screen. That these things here, just hellacious. These guys. There's a whole bunch of little ones. So there's some smithing stones here. Just keep running up. Stick to the road. Stick to the center of the road. It's gonna run down your stamina. So keep watching your stamina bar. If you're off to the left here, straight up the road. Avoid those little creepy crawly hands going around there. There's another one off to the left. 
just ignore them, you should make it no problem. They're slow to react. They're they're deadly, but they're slow to react. Here you can cut across the grass a little bit, to take a shortcut to the stairs here to avoid this giant hand. And he's gonna try to paralyze you with that purple crap. You should be able to get in this building here before he does that. And up the stairs, you're gonna discover a side of grace right here. Next, we're gonna have to deal with the spectral knight out here. Basically, gonna get on this walkway that points to the southeast, and you're just gonna go tearing up the walkway, and these spectral the spectral knights are gonna start appearing. But once again, they are slow to react. They have to take time to appear, and then kind of like get busy trying to take you out, so you can easily run past them. Even if they, they look like they're going to start shooting at you, don't worry about it, just keep running. And you're going to cut to the left here. Go all the way up to the stairs, up the top of the stairs, and take the elevator up. And here is the final side of grace before the Royal Knight Loretta boss fight. Okay, it's all gonna kick off here. Now, we gotta put together a strike team to take down Royal Knight Loretta. We can, like I said, we could take her down with about, I'd say about half a dozen rock slings with our intelligence at 38 and the meteorite staff. It takes about half a dozen rock slings. However, it's just a matter of staying alive long enough to get those rock slings in. So we're gonna need some heavy duty distraction. So I want everybody to go to Castlemore Rampart way down at the north end of Weeping Peninsula and you can take this Spirit Spring up to the east and if we recall we went up this tower here off to the right there to get a memory stone in part one. Now we're just gonna head off to the north down the hill. I've tried a number of different spirit ashes with Royal Knight Loretta. I tried using plus five lone wolves. They got wiped out pretty pretty quickly. But it was a help. But I think the best spirit ashes is um, the demi human spirit ashes. We've used this in other builds. These five little monkeys are just um, they're perfect for this. And they can be found here in Impaler's Catacombs. I'm going to show you on the map. We don't have this part mapped out yet, but that's where I am. In the northeast part of Lar uh What did I say? Not Lagernia. Weeping Peninsula. Okay, so go in here. Impaler's Catacombs. You just have to deal with a few fanged imps in here. And I'm resetting my flask to 2 and 5. I'd say 2 for emergency help. But okay, I went 1 and 6. You can go 2 and 5. I just want to slap on some of uh, the traveler's gear that we got in part 1. All that traveler's gear is going to give you great immunity. We got that at the Street of Sages runes. It's going to be an imp that comes up here, and I'm using Gravitas on my Meteor Car Blade to take him out. But I would recommend just shooting a Night Comet at him, or even just hit him. I'm going to show you that um, in a few minutes when we have to come back through here again. Just, just hit him as he comes up. Shoot a Night Comet at this imp over here, and that'll send him down. Yeah, I did that the hard way the first time. There's the boss door. So we have to find the lever to open the boss door. Three imps in here. Easily wipe them out with Night Comet. There's another one on the wall up to the left. And the third one's only going to spawn when you go in a little bit. Go in a little bit. He's going to jump down. There he is. Night Comet. And that's it. 
that's all the combat we're going to have to do in here except for the boss fight. Grab that Grave Glover one. This is important. And cut to the right here. This floor rises up, so just go on a little bit and back up. And then you're going to jump down below. And a whole bunch of putrid corpses are going to spawn. Absolutely ignore them. You can grab this Ghost Glover too. That's not really important, but uh, you can grab it anyways. Grab this Grave Glover too. That is important. And another Grave Glover one. And another Grave Glover one back here. And like I said, just ignore all the putrid corpses rising out of the water. And take this ladder up. And here is the boss lever. Open the boss door. One more imp to take care of just to up the head around the corner. Grab another Grave Lover too. And that's it. The boss fight is this Erdtree Burial Watchdog with five imps. And the best way to take care of them is just, just pummel them with crystal darts, which will, some of you know this already, um, it will send him into a frenzy and he'll start attacking his own imps. And he'll wipe them out for you but you're going to have to keep to the perimeter and keep your distance. Here's the easy way to take care of this imp. Just whack him as soon as he comes up. That'll send him down. <laughs> the other one gets a night comet. Now, with this sorcerer, we're going to take down this Earth Tree Burial Watchdog with night comet once we get a chance to go at him. So make sure you have your Staff of Loss in your left hand, Meteorite Staff in your right, Night Comet ready to go, some Crystal Darts ready to go, and your Lone Wolves ready to go. Okay, so basically we're going to go in, target the Air Tree Burial Watchdog at the very back in the center, whip Crystal Darts at him until he looks like he's electrified. Not him, that guy right there. Just keep whipping Crystal Darts at him, he's going to kind of, there you go, he's been electrified. Now now he's in a frenzy. Now all you have to do is just stay away from him. Keep your distance, stick to the perimeter, he's going to start killing his own imps. And refill FP. See, they've wiped out a lot of them already, he's almost dead. They're pretty much doing the job for you. You can kill any of these imps that are stragglers. And then just start whipping Night Comet at this guy. Is that easy? This is like, probably the easiest build to use against this guy. And there's your Demi Human Ashes. This is our strike team. And for some reason, your lone wolves keep, like, fighting after the fight's over. I don't know why they do that in this particular area. Okay, now we're going back to the round table, and we're going to upgrade the demi, demi human ashes but first of all first of all rather we have to get Rodrika as a spirit tuner okay and to do this all you have to do is just talk to her once talk to the blacksmith once ask him about uh, Rodrika go back to Rodrika talk to her again go through all the dialogue go back to the blacksmith again ask him about Rodrika go through all that dialogue then go back to the round table rest and Rodrika will teleport to her new place, place of business in front of the blacksmith as a spirit tuner. You can now use her to upgrade your spirit ashes. For which you'll need Grave Glover. And we have Grave Glover 1 and 2. So we can upgrade the Demi Human. Here I accidentally upgraded the Lone Wolf Ashes. I didn't mean to do that. Because I had them equipped. This is kind of a reflex action. Okay, so we equip the Demi Human Ashes and we're going to upgrade the Demi Human Ashes. We could do it up to plus two because we have Grave Lover one and two. So now we're missing three, four, and five. We also need some money to do this operation. So everybody go to Rotview Balcony off in Northwest Caled. And we're going to kill a putrid avatar for some money. 
to upgrade um, our demi-human ashes. And then at the same time, there's this other location right near there where we can get Great Blubber 3, 4, and 5 very quickly. Okay, so point yourself towards the giant earth tree. You should probably equip Night Comet first. Because I was trying to kill the putrid avatar without having to kill the the little guys around this gnarly tree here. But I realized that wasn't possible. So, because eventually you're going to engage me as I get closer and closer. Right down there is either a putrid avatar or an earth tree avatar. I think it's a putrid avatar. You could just run past them and off to the right there, down that little corridor, and go to minor or tree catacombs where you're going to get great blood for 3, 4, and 5. But um, this is such an easy kill with Roxling that, you know, and it pays, uh, I forget, like 9,000 runes. So you might as well do this. It's dead easy. Easy money. It's like if they kill these guys first so they're not harassing you as you're trying to take down the. Okay, so the coast seems clear. Get to the very edge of the cliff. Attempt to lock on. We locked on, switch over the rock sling. And just bombard him with rock sling. First thing he's going to do is move close to the cliff where he'll get a death blade on you. But he'll eventually back off. And as you can see, we're doing a ton of damage. Now he's trying to shoot those holy pest threads at us. But he's he's blocked his own line of fire by getting too close to the cliff, so what you could do is uh, go off to the left there and see if you get a line of fire on him, or just wait it out, wait for him to back off. Lock on, and send him those rock slings again. This is a perfect example of how the game, I mean, he's really far away. If he was horizontally that far away, like like on a flat plane, we'd never be able to hit him with Rock Sling. But the thing about it is the game only measures range in terms of like on a horizontal plane. As far as vertical, you pretty much have infinite range. So it's, he's pretty much straight down. So. If we were on the same level, we'd just be like, you know, a few yards away. That's what makes this fight so easy. Okay, a couple more rock slings. My left one's breaking off. And he's just got a smidgen of health left. One more should do it. There we go, watch the bottom right corner of the screen. Should be 9,600 bucks. 9,600 runes, almost 10,000 runes, and the Green Burst Crystal Tear, and the Flame Shrouding Crystal Tear. Now, once again, since you're here, you don't want to waste this opportunity. There's a rune arc on this branch, so carefully get down onto this branch growing out of the side of the cliff there, and work your way down. You can kill all these guys with Night Comet. yourself a free rune arc.
kill five of these guys and earn yourself an extra thousand runes. We're down here. Down the hill we go to the east. Go around the right side of the earth tree. And on your right, you're going to come up to minor earth tree catacombs. In here, it's just a grab and run. It's going to take one minute. You only have to kill one imp. And you can easily kill him with Night Common. Okay, don't go any further than the bottom of the stairs. The imp is right up top hanging out on the ceiling. One charge Night Common so you should instantly kill him. And then go around the right. Take the elevator down, and once you get to the bottom, you're going to go to the east. It's going to be a Grave Glover 4 right on your right as soon as you get to the bottom. There's a Grave Glover 4. Go out, hang a left, and the Grave Glover 3 is going to be to your right right here. And go all the way to the back of this Scarlet Rot filled room quickly now. By the way, you're going to put on your Traveler's Gear, eh? I hope you have your... Did I mention that? Yeah, put on all your Traveler's Gear to protect you against the Rot. There you go, now you got Grave Glover 3, 4, and 5. So that's it. All we need is the money to upgrade them. And we just need to spend all our money so that, you know, <laughs> if you die at the Royal Knight Loretta Boss fight, you won't lose anything. So what you want now is about 16,000 runes. 16 to 17,000 runes. I'm going to go to my farming place, Ferrum Great Bridge and kill about four or five of those vulgar militiamen. And you already know how to do this with Night Comet. Two Night Comet each. One charge one and a quick follow up one. Quick farm on horseback as I showed in the previous video. Okay, priority number one, upgrade the demi-human ashes to plus five, then level up. There we go, up to plus five, ready to rock. That's our strike team. Very effective against Royal Knight Loretta. They're keeping her, keep her nice and busy. All we have to do is keep her busy for 45 seconds. <laughs> like literally. So, I've leveled up. Basically, I'm spending all my money. You should too. Because if you screw up, then you win, you're not going to lose any money. So I have like 400 runes left. Basically, I'm going to spend it all on darts. Or rather, throwing daggers. By 10 throwing daggers, and now I've only got 13 runes left, I've got nothing to lose. And back up to that side of grace we discovered in Carry a Manor. Manor, upper level. And here we go. Get on your game face. Get on your game face, people. This is it. Royal Knight Loretta boss fight. We're going to do this with Rock Sling. And we're going to speed run to the location. Once we get to the location, we'll have time to set up because it's kind of like this big arena with a big ring in the center. And you don't have to go into the center of the ring until you're ready. There's nothing really here we you know that would really help us. But I'm gonna put the green burst crystal tier in. And make sure you have an exalted flesh ready to go. That will actually give your rock sling 20% extra damage. And most important of all, wait until nighttime. Why Slack? Like, because your demi-human ashes are going to be more powerful. Oh 
hope Gamer Slack shows this. Here we go. You read the uh, item card here on the Demi Human Ashes. Here we go. Though they seem intelligent, when night falls, their blood boils and they become feral. Yeah, they become really aggressive at night. So, yeah, definitely. And definitely put on this spell draped talisman that we got in the Celly of the Town of Sorcery. This will bump up our magic damage by a lot, which is exactly what you need to protect yourself against Royal Knight Loretta. And that's pretty much it. Um, get your shield up. You don't need the Staff of Loss in your left hand, so get your shield up. Actually, for now, not yet. Keep the Staff of Loss in your left hand. You're going to wait until that wolf passes off to the left and then just run for it. Run down the road here. I'm going to cut to the left and up the stairs. Because we don't want to get damaged as we, you know, approach the boss fight. And then cut the left here, jump across a little gap, and go up the ladder. Run right by that guy. You don't want to engage in anybody. You don't want to get dinged up for the fight. Okay, follow my route here. Cut a left here. Jump across a little gap. The only thing we're going to have to kill is this guy here. So get a night combat ready to go. Two night combats kill. Run as fast as you can up the stairs. Keep to the right side. Go through this opening here and cut to the left and run down a bit. Just in case one of those exile crossbow archers is trying to follow you. Okay, and this is Royal Knight Loretta's arena. Ain't nobody follows me, so I'm good. You're good, Slack. Huh. Whatever you do, do not go into this the pool, the round pool in the center until you're ready. Now, there's two things you can do. All these chairs circling around, you could either A, use them for cover, or B, clear them so that they don't block your rock sling. I'm going to go for option B and the easiest way to clear them is just simply roll through them. So you're going to roll through them all the way around. That way when you're casting rock sling at Royal Knight Loretta they won't get blocked by these chairs. Reducing their effectiveness and like I said you got to take her down hard and fast. Your demi human ashes are going to perform well but they won't last forever. Okay, so having done that, I think I added Golden Vow. Yeah, I got the dagger with Golden Vow on it, so cast Golden Vow. Switch over to your staff. Go into the center. Spawn your Demi Human Ashes. Refill FP and get away. Because the Royal Knight Loretta is going to like pr pretty typically target you first. You should actually lock on and just put your shield up, which I forgot to do. Okay, once they engage, Start spamming up that rock sling. And take your exalted flesh when you're like just before you start spamming the rock sling. Look how much damage it does. Like I said, it's just a matter of staying alive long enough. And you should keep your shield up at all the all times. You can actually cast rock sling like with your shield up. Keep your shield up. Just cast rock sling. Your character will kind of move aside their shield. But put it back right after. There you go, and that's it. Loretta's Great Bow. We also get the Ash of War Loretta Slash, but we're after Loretta's Great Bow. So, your quick and dirty OP Spell Sword speed build is now 200% better with Loretta's Great Bow. And we're running short of memory slots, so we're going to have to make some sacrifices. More memory slots. I guess that we'll, we'll cover that in Mega Overdrive. You guys want to see Mega Overdrive? Post a comment. <laughs> What's after that, Slack? Super Mega Overdrive? Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, so I'm back at the uh, the Church of Ella. I'm gonna cash in my golden runes. Goodbye. And. I'm just going to fool around with the Loretta's Great Bow a little bit to end off this video. What is it? it? Looks like I'm just short of leveling up, like maybe like 200 runes. Uh, 
and what I finally decided to do was just simply go kill the giant crab just north of Agil Lake South. Alright, Agil Lake South. Let's kick the tires and light the fires. Check the range on this. Is that nuts or what? Like I said, spectacular range. Got a slow cast time, but wow. There we go, so level up points into vigor, definitely. And here I want to showcase once again the spectacular range of Loretta's Great Book. Take out this camp commander here. <laughs> Take him down before he even has a chance to like, you know, decide what's shooting at him. There you go, Loretta's Grapo. Who loves you? Slack loves us, that's right, and don't you forget it. Here it's just field testing this on a troll, which is kind of, you know, a little redundant because we know we can always take down a troll with uh, Rock Sling much easier. But as some of you know, this is like my crash test dummy in Elden Ring. If I ever want to test a new weapon, bring it down to this troll at the Third Church of America. Try him out. Reason being is because he com he's completely isolated. He's a big target and he's completely isolated. Yeah, give it a good try there. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Down you go. And it's a done deal. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs> there you go. Overdrive. Take a bow there, Sabrina. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know, do give me a thumbs up, post a comment. And most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. All right, you are now two hours and 15 minutes into the game, and you already have all these kick-ass spells, including Loretta's Great Bow. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey, guys. Real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page, and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.